Welcome to this Google Admin tutorial brought to you by Apps Events and Acer. I'm Charlie Love, and today we're going to talk about setting up and deploying two step verification in Google Workspace. For those that don't know, two step verification uses an additional security step post login. This step looks for a physical device or approval of an authentication code to authorize a login. The types of two step verification available in Google Workspace have different levels of security. So most secure are security keys, like the Titan keys available from the Google Store, or those built into Pixel phones. After login, your device looks for this physical key to be present before allowing access to your data. Verification generators are the next most secure, as these generate a code on your device, which you enter to gain access to your data. The Google prompt is next, this sends a request to your device asking that you approve the login. You can't progress until confirming it is you trying to access your data. Two-step verification also generates backup codes, which you need to keep in a safe place. These can also be used to verify a user. And the least secure means of two-step verification? Well, that's using voice or SMS messaging to your device. It's been shown that these messages can be intercepted as your request isn't encrypted and has to pass through your phone provider. Two-step verification puts an extra barrier between your organization and cyber criminals who try to steal usernames and passwords to access your data. Turning on two-step verification is the single most important action you can take to protect your admins and users. Administrator accounts should be protected by enforced two-step verification. You should also consider using security keys to maximize security and also look at the advanced protection program for Google Workspace and Cloud Identity Super Admins or Delegated Admins. You can make two-step verification optional or required for your users. I recommend enforcing two-step verification for your administrator accounts and users who work with the most important business data. The administrator account is the most powerful account because it can delete users, reset passwords, and access all of your information. Users who work with sensitive data, such as financial records, student data, or employee information should also use two-step verification. Because security keys are the strongest two-step verification method, you should consider this for your organization. So let's talk about deploying two-step verification and how this process works. The first step is to communicate with your users. Two-step verification is a significant change and users require some lead time to set this up in advance of any enforcement you put in place. As admins deploying two-step verification, you need to tell your users what two-step verification is and why your company is using it. If two-step verification is going to be optional, or required for their job role. If it's required, give the date when users must turn on two-step verification. And you need to let users know which two-step verification methods they will be required to use or recommended to use. Once you have your comms deployed, the next step is to set up two-step verification for your whole organization. For specific organizational units in the admin console, or for a configuration group. In the admin console, go to security, authentication, two-step verification. To apply the setting to everyone, leave the top organizational unit selected. Otherwise, select a child organizational unit or a configuration group. Check the allow users to turn on two-step verification box. Select enforcement and then off. Click Save. If you configured an organizational unit or group, you might be able to inherit or override a parent organizational unit or unset a group as needed. Step three is to tell your users to enroll in two-step verification. Provide instructions for enrolling in the two-step verification methods that you want to allow. Google has some great support articles on how to do this, so you can direct your users to these. Step four is to track the progress of your users enrolling in two-step verification. This can be checked from the admin console. In the admin console, 
Go to Menu, Reporting, Reports, User Reports, Security. This report will allow you to see who is enrolled in two-step verification and who is not. If you want to identify OUs and groups who are not using two-step verification, you can in the Admin Console. Go to Menu, Security, Security Center, Security Health. Search Security Health for two-step verification for admins or two-step verification for users to view two-step verification information. Now your users and or your admins are enrolled in two-step verification, it's now time to enforce this. As I mentioned earlier, it's important to enforce this level of security for your administrator users and those users with access to sensitive information. So let's enforce two-step verification for this admin OU within our school demo OU. We turned on the ability for users to turn on two-step verification earlier. So this box is ticked. For enforcement, choose an option of either on, which starts enforcement immediately, or turn on enforcement from date, which I recommend, as this gives your users some time to get themselves enrolled. Select the start date for enforcement. Users will see reminders to enroll in two-step verification when they sign in. When using this option, enforcement will start within 24 to 48 hours of the chosen date. If you really want a precise enforcement start time, use the first on option and manually enforce the start. Your users won't get any prompts to set up two-step verification with that approach, as I've said before. So communication is really important. You can give new employees time to enroll before enforcement applies to their new accounts. For a new user enrollment period, select a time frame from one day to six months if you want. I would recommend that you choose one or two days because that's the more secure option. During this period, users can sign in with just their passwords. To let users avoid repeated two-step verification checks on trusted devices, under frequency, check the allow user to trust the device box. The first time a user signs in from a new device, they can check a box to trust their device. Then the user isn't prompted for two-step verification on the device unless the user clears their cookies or revokes the device or you reset the user's sign-in cookie. In most cases, you would want to allow trusted devices to reduce the impact of users frequently having to use two-step verification on the device that they regularly use. Only in cases where your users frequently switch between devices would you want to avoid this setting. As admins, you have some choice on the authentication methods that you allow. For methods, select the enforcement method. The various options are any, users can set up any two-step verification method, any accept verification codes via text, phone calls, only security keys, users must set up a security key. So if you choose any, users can set up any two-step verification method they wish. If you choose any accept verification codes via text or phone calls, choosing this method means that users can set up any two-step verification method but can't use their phones to receive two-step verification codes via voice or SMS. Users who do use texts and phone calls to verify will be locked out of their accounts. To avoid locking out these users from their accounts, refer to the Google support pages to find out how you can monitor the use of text or voice verification codes through the login audit log. If you choose only security keys, users must set up a security key. Before selecting this method of enforcement, find users who are already set up using security keys using the user report data. To view real-time two-step verification status for each user, go to manage a user's security settings. If you select only security key, set the two-step verification policy suspension grace period. 
This period lets users sign in with a backup verification code that you generate for the user, which is useful when a user loses their security key. Select the length of this grace period, which starts when you generate the verification code. For security codes, choose whether users can sign in with a security code or not. If you choose, don't allow users to generate security codes, users can't generate security codes at all. Selecting allow security codes without remote access, then users can generate security codes and use them on the same device or the same local network. If you choose allow security codes with remote access, users can generate security codes and use them on other devices or networks, such as when accessing a remote server or a virtual machine. Security codes are different from one-time codes that apps like Google Authenticator generate. To generate a security code, a user taps the security key on their device to generate the code. The security codes are valid for five minutes. Now click Save. If users don't comply by the enforcement date, there are ways that you can use as workarounds to get the user signed back in temporarily. But if you've given users time to enroll and they haven't done it, then the best option, which maintains the level of security that you've configured, is to use backup codes. These can be generated for a user by an admin. I'll talk a bit more about that in the next video. And that's it. We've communicated with users, enabled two-step verification, monitor the deployment of two-step verification, and then enforce two-step verification for our key users. If you have any questions, please drop these in the comments on this video. In the next video, I'll talk about the impact of two-step verification on legacy applications, app passwords, identity providers, and the information needed to recover accounts if it all goes wrong for your admins. I'm Charlie Love, and this Google Workspace admin video has been brought to you by Apps Events and Acer.